The 76th Primetime Emmy Awards were nothing short of iconic, and Japan absolutely dominated this year. Let's get into it because we have some history-making moments, jaw-dropping red carpet looks, and of course, those golden trophies. So, the biggest win of the night? That's gotta be the historical drama Shogun taking home Best Drama Series. This was a huge win for Japan, and the stars of the show didn't disappoint either. Hiroyuki Sanada and Anna Sawai, get this, became the first ever Japanese actors to win Emmys for leading roles in a drama. It is to all the women who expect nothing and continue to be an example for everyone. Thank you so much. Now that's what I call groundbreaking. And speaking of Anna Sawai, can we talk about her look? I mean, she slayed the red carpet. Anna worked with Carla Welch, you know, the stylist who dresses Hailey Bieber and Greta Gerwig, and oh boy did they deliver. Anna was glowing in a custom-made red mermaid peplum-style gown by none other than Vera Wang. We knew that the dress would do all the talking, we just wanted a couple of Cartier. A couple of little yeah. boom boom, but yeah. don't go crazy here. No, no, we don't need to. The girl looked like a walking dream. And let's not forget the sparkly Cartier jewelry she accessorized with. Zana Roberts Rossi even said that this dress was the dress of her dreams. And you could totally tell. Sawai was radiating in red with a naturally dewy, glamorous makeup look. A whole moment on the red carpet. Now her co-star, Hiroyuki Sanada, kept it classic and chic. He showed up in black and navy, proving that sometimes less is more. Elegant restraint at its finest. But the night wasn't just about Shogun. Let's give it up for Jeremy Allen White, he snagged Best Actor in a Comedy for the Bear. My beautiful cast, uh, I love you forever. I love to work with you, and I just, I, I, I want us to be in each other's lives uh, for forever. Honestly, no surprises there. This guy's portrayal of culinary genius Carmen Brazado is next level, and his co-stars didn't disappoint in the style department either. Maddie Matheson, AKA Neil Fack from The Bear, left us all wondering if his outfit was pink, beige, or both but he still looked stunned regardless of the color. And Lisa Colenzaeus, who won Best Supporting Actress, strutted away with a gold trophy while rocking emerald green. And to all the Latinas who are you looking at me, keep believing and vote. Talk about a power color combo. Gold and emerald are giving winner vibes. Jean Smart continues to be an absolute legend, taking home Best Actress in a comedy series for her role in Hacks. Not only did she crush it on screen, but the series itself won Best Comedy Series. And Jean? Always classy. Always on point. Now, let's get into the real juicy part. Those red carpet looks that had us all gasping. First up, Jennifer Aniston. Nominated for Best Actress in a Drama for the Morning Show. I love you. What, quickly, the dress, the fashion. Oscar de la Renta, Jennifer Aniston. She floated down the red carpet in a pearl-covered Oscar de la Renta gown, serving elegance as only Jennifer Aniston can. Right beside her was Reese Witherspoon, also from The Morning Show, looking fierce in black and gold Dior. Adam, this is Dior. Hey, yes. Fancy, and this necklace. This necklace is Boucher Herber. And can we talk about Laura Dern for a sec? This is the goddess Gabriella Hurst. She is not a goddess, I love her. We love such a her. goddess, yes. so I'm so lucky to be wearing her. She showed up with a literal palm tree necklace, embracing the theme of her show Palm Royale in regal fashion. Nicola Coughlin went full Barbarella in a sequined Prabal Gurung gown, leaving her Bridgerton days in the dust. It was futuristic, it was bold, and it was unforgettable. Penelope meets intergalactic Hollywood siren. I love that, oh my God. For those of you who love a nod to Heritage, Richard Gadd, nominated for Baby Reindeer, hit the red carpet in a full tartan look. Gotta love a man repping his roots while repping his nomination. No matter how bad it gets, it always gets better. Yeah, so if you're struggling, keep going, keep going. And I promise you, things will be okay. On the flip side, The Crown's Elizabeth Debicki kept it simple but stunning with a scooped black gown. It was all about understated elegance, and she nailed it. Oh, and hold up, did anyone catch Plain Jane? Plain Jane, whose real name is Andrew Vladimir Denayevsky, may have finished third on Drag Race, but she's always first when it comes to owning the villain role and slaying the red carpet. Talk about versatility. This year, the Emmys really stepped up in recognizing indigenous actors, and the barriers keep breaking with Nava Mao, a trans-Latina actor who's making history with her role in Baby Reindeer, 
Her powerful performance in the real-life story of Richard Gadd's stalking experience marks the first time a Latina trans actor has been nominated in her category. As Mao said, when trans people are given the opportunity, we will grow beyond any expectation. Now let's not forget about the comedic legend Carol Burnett, who at 91 is now the oldest woman to be nominated for an Emmy. Seven-time winner and still crushing it. What a legend. Well, your name's called. I've always been surprised. Really? Yeah, which I think is good. Rather than saying, oh, I think I'm gonna get it and then be disappointed. It's always a happy surprise. Lastly, let's give a shout out to screenwriter and director Issa Lopez for her groundbreaking nominations with True Detective. Hailing from Mexico City, Lopez has been in the game for a while, but now she's getting the recognition she deserves, earning a spot as the first Latina ever nominated for directing. My heart is singing, Lopez shared on Instagram, celebrating the show's 19 nominations. It making this series was an absolute daily pleasure. Now you might be thinking, didn't we already have the Emmys this year? Well, you're not wrong. Did you know that in the 75 year history of the Emmys, this will be the first time ever there have been two Emmy award shows in the same calendar year? The Emmys you're thinking of were the 2023 ones, which got delayed. Why? Well, back in May, the Writers Guild of America kicked off their strike. And by July, the actors from SAG-AFTRA joined the picket lines. Basically, production came to a screeching halt and even the Emmys couldn't escape the chaos. SAG-AFTRA's national board unanimously voted to issue a strike order against the studios and streamers. Their demands were no joke either. Better pay, fair residuals for all that streaming we're doing, protection against AI, because robots aren't writing our favorite shows just yet, and overall, better working conditions. Totally reasonable, if you ask me. Very much in support of all the unions, and I'm a part of SAG, so I would absolutely stand by that. Fast forward to the end of July, and Fox had to postpone the Emmys. The WGA finally ended its strike on September 27th, while SAG-AFTRA got their deal in November. So by the time everyone was back to work, the 2023 Emmys rolled around in January 2024, only a tiny bit behind schedule. But hey, better late than never, right? Now, the 75th Emmys were all about honoring TV shows from June 2022 to May 2023. Succession and The Bear tied for the most wins of the night with six each. Beef wasn't far behind, scooping up five awards. Succession received 27 nominations this year and a total overall of 75. The show holds this year's top spot with the most enemy nominations. But let's talk about some history-making moments, shall we? Ali Wong became the first woman of Asian descent to win for a lead role in a comedy series thanks to her killer performance in Beef. Do you have any idea who you just fucked with? Huh? And Quinta Brunson? She won Best Actress in a comedy for Abbott Elementary, making her the first black woman to win in that category in over 40 years. The last person to win it was Isabel Sanford for The Jeffersons back in 1981. I love making Abbott Elementary so much, and I am so happy to be able to live my dream and act out comedy. That brings us to this Sunday's 76th Emmy Awards. This time, we're looking at shows that aired between June 2023 and May 2024, and this year's nominees are making history again. FX is dominating with Shogun, earning 25 nominations. It's set in feudal Japan and based on a real-life friendship between a Japanese ruler and an English samurai. Sounds intense, right? Do not be fooled by our politeness. Our bows, our maze of rituals. Death is in our air. The Bear is back too, racking up 23 nominations after breaking records at the 2023 Emmys with the most comedy nods in a single year. They've already snagged seven awards at the Primetime Creative Arts Emmys last week, so don't be surprised if they clean up again. Other heavy hitters this year? The Crown with 18 nominations, as well as Fallout and Mr. and Mrs. Smith, both with 16 nominations. Well, there were three of us in this marriage, so it's a bit crowded. And speaking of breaking records, Selena Gomez made history as the most nominated Latina producer in Emmy history for her work on Only Murders in the Building. She's also up for her first acting nomination, Double Honor. I'm really, really grateful to be recognized, so um, yeah, it's exciting. Joining her from the same show, the legendary Meryl Streep, a six-time nominee, snagged her first ever nomination in a comedy category for her unforgettable role. For the love. 
Only Murders is definitely bringing the heat this year. Then we have Lily Gladstone and Kaylee Rice, who made history as the first indigenous women to ever earn Emmy nominations for acting, a huge win for representation. Gladstone, of Blackfeet and Nimipu descent, and Race, a two-spirit actor with roots in the Sikonki Wampanoag tribe in Cabo Verde, Africa, are both breaking barriers. Gladstone even gave Race a heartfelt shout out on X saying, so grateful to be on this ride with you, sis. How sweet of her. From her nation in Blackfeet, where I'm from, we, our origin story is that we came from the stars. We came from Sky Woman, who fell to Earth and created everything for us, and then when we pass away, we return to the stars. And the appreciation for indigenous talent didn't stop there. Reservation Dogs finally got its long overdue recognition, with Canada's DeFero Wunatai earning one of the show's four nominations in its final season. He's now the first actor of indigenous descent to get a nod in his category. 